Well, hello everyone. It's Grady back on your TV for another update for the city of Belleville. And uh, today's update is for the week of September the 28th. And, uh, you know, again, it amazes me how quickly time has gone. I remember talking uh, just a few, uh, a few weeks ago about uh, the end of August. And so here we are into the fall and it's been a spectacular uh, fall so far with a fair amount of rain and some beautiful sunshine and, and lots of great activities. Um, I always start off my weekly updates with a situation or review of the current COVID numbers. And at the beginning of the week um, this week, we ended up getting 10 new cases, which was a result of the, over the weekend. That brought us up to a total of 40 active cases at this current time. Um, of those active cases, uh, four people are in hospital, uh, three are in intensive care, two are actually on ventilators, and, um, and so it reminds us about how we really need to continue to be careful and to be vigilant. Um, we have had 1,374 cases since the beginning of COVID, and unfortunately, we've had 13 deaths. And so again, it's something that's not, we're not done yet with this. Uh, we have to learn to be, to be careful and to be safe. I wanna thank everybody who has been so cooperative and following public health uh, directives. Uh, we've been doing a really, really good job. Um, testing uh, at our COVID-19 uh, assessment facilities throughout uh, Hastings and Prince Edward Public Health Unit is up. We saw an increase last week in numbers of cases. We've had now 181,153 um, residents uh, be tested at those sites. Um, the interesting thing is probably that uptake is due to the couple of outbreaks that have been declared in our region. So, you know, again, be careful. Uh, and we know that the number one thing we can do to deal with uh, COVID-19 is to get vaccinated. And so some really good news on that front. Uh, we continue to see good numbers. Uh, at the beginning of this week, 131,096 uh, residents over the age of 12 received their first dose. That's an 87% uh, rate, which is fantastic. Uh, we've had 117,882 residents receive their second dose, which is 79%. So we're doing really well. Keep up the good work. Um, and once again, I just want to tell everybody, if you have not received your vaccine or you haven't received your second dose, um, there is a, it's very easy for you to do so. Uh, you can go to, or right through this website address that's on the screen. This is the Province of Ontario COVID-19 vaccination booking portal. And uh, it's very easy for you to go on there and select some sites. Uh, you can also walk in to the Quinney Sports and Wellness Center when that facility is open. You can also go to almost any pharmacy uh, in our region and get a, uh, a, a vaccination. And there are doctor's offices that are also doing vaccination. So, you know, I encourage everyone to do it. As I said, it's the best thing that we can do. I thank everybody who's, uh, who's cared enough about themselves and our community to, uh, to vaccinate yourselves. And I look forward to all that moving along. Last week, uh, the city of Belleville instituted a number of new policies which require something called the proof of vaccination. So uh, sometimes people call it a vaccination passport. And that's basically um, either in writing or on your electronic device. You need to show the uh, proof that you've received your second dose of the vaccination. And you're now required to, to present that if you're 12 years of age and older in all city buildings, um, with the exception of the Belleville Public Library, which has exemptions, and the Quinty Sports and Wellness Center, which has specific exemptions. And I'd ask anyone who um, is confused about that or uncertain to go to the Belleville Public Library website or the Quinney Sports and Wellness website for more information. And you can see our entire policy on the City of Belleville uh, website as well. Um, you know, last week also, uh, the province of Ontario instituted their requirements for proof of vaccination for a number of activities. Everything from uh, theaters and, uh, and uh, museums to restaurants and sports events. Uh, in the same time, they in increased the number of people that can go and watch indoor sporting events uh, as if as long as they have their proof of vaccination and they wear a mask in those in those areas so you know we're seeing uh, some new regulations that are requiring us to show proof of vaccination but we're also seeing relaxation of the rules and increases in the numbers of people who can participate and that is great of course uh, those that have a medical exemption uh, have the ability to uh, to continue to be uh, to, 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 to go to those places um, but those of us who don't have a medical exemption uh, we are required to have proof of vaccination and, uh, and the one last thing I'd also point on this is 
there was an important decision last week by the Ontario Human Rights Tribunal, where they had said that uh, requiring this uh, proof of vaccination in order to access services is reasonable and is permissible in Ontario. And, uh, and so I think that should clarify it for a lot of the people who have felt that this was improper. Uh, this week on Monday, we had a Belleville City Council meeting. And at that meeting, we conducted a number of uh, items under, under business. I wanna talk about uh, the deputation that we had from Janet Gerald from the Quinty Arts Council. Uh, she came to, uh, to thank Belleville City Council for the investment that we'd be making in arts, culture, and heritage. Uh, the Quinty Arts Council has a long history, uh, including um, being involved in uh, the, the Mayor's Luncheon for the Arts. And that will be coming up in a few weeks where they will announce this year's recipients of awards uh, for uh, arts in the Quinty region. Um, uh, they also have made a suggestion to us about increasing the amount of, of funding that we put uh, for arts groups. Currently right now, Belleville City Council, uh, we allocate $50,000 a year. That is for grassroots arts community of people in the community. Uh, that could be individuals, it could be groups, um, and it could be projects. And, uh, and that funding is designed to keep uh, those people able to practice that craft because we benefit so much when we have a strong and vibrant arts community. Um, all I have to ask is if you had a chance to go to Porch Fest this year, the outdoor uh, music that people played on their porches in East Hill, you'll see why a strong and, art and vibrant arts community is so great to have in a community like ours. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's important. So uh, they asked us to increase the funding. Uh, they also asked to play a role in helping to determine who gets that funding. And Belleville City Council will consider that in the spring during our operating budget. We also had a presentation from um, Highland Shores Children Aid Society. And uh, next month, October, is Dress Purple Month. And it is a month for us to consider uh, the children in our community that are less fortunate, that need assistance, they need to be taken into care. Um, and it is tragic, uh, obviously, uh, but it is happening. Uh, and as our community grows, we do have more cases of it. Uh, there is going to be a, um, uh, you know, a, a radiothon next week of all the stations in our community to help raise funds for it. And I encourage everybody to, uh, to be generous if you possibly can. Um, you know, again, these kids are our children. They're children of our entire community and, uh, and they deserve to have a better chance in life. And if you heard some of the wonderful success stories of uh, Children's Aid Society where they have been able to, uh, to get involved with children, help them from a, a life of abuse or neglect. And then these, these kids were able to get back to sort of normal, go to school, go on to post-secondary, go on to be incredible contributors to our society. Uh, it just makes the right sense. And, uh, and, and I encourage everybody next week to support that organization. Um, Belleville City Council also received a request from the 23 local optometrists in our community regarding uh, the, the funding level that they receive uh, in, in, uh, in Ontario. And uh, as a matter of fact, Ontario has been very um, much behind uh, looking at inflation and what it's been doing to the, um, the, the financial formula used to compensate optometrists, right? So much that it's, it's a real crisis. And as I said, 23 of our local optometrists wrote to, ask, uh, wrote to us asking us to support a resolution uh, that the province uh, get back to negotiating with them and come to a reasonable um, conclusion to that. Um, you know, certainly Belleville City Council supported that. And the one comment that we would make is that um, we've really fallen, Ontario has really fallen behind other provinces and we do not want to see a, a departure of our optometrists from Ontario to Quebec or Manitoba or Saskatchewan or other provinces because our fee structure is so incompatible and inconsistent. So, um, you know, if you are uh, going to be seeing your optometrist, uh, or if you know an optometrist, uh, thank them for uh, for their service, and please let them know that Belleville City Council and, in fact, the entire city stands behind them. Um, we also received a letter from one of our residents and one of our local historians, and this uh, this person had done a, a fair amount of work researching uh, residents from Belleville, uh, both in the Thurlow part of Belleville, but also Be Belleville proper. And um, he has come up with a list of 30 uh, potential additions to the Belleville Cenotaph to recognize the contributions of residents that fought in World War I and World War II. And, uh, and that was really uh, something that was um, 
uh, was important. Uh, you may recall two years ago in 2019, we added three names to the uh, cenotaph um, at the, the memorial um, uh, the Memorial Park, where where we celebrate Remembrance Day every year, and uh, indeed uh, we've we've chosen to receive that letter from that resident. We've asked staff to look into it and to research it, and if in fact uh, these residents do uh, deserve to be on that cemetery, we will be making arrangements to add that to it. So, uh, you know, we we appreciate all of our residents who keep us in the loop and keep us informed about uh, what's going on. And uh, had this letter not come into us we would not have been aware of this potential oversight. So, you know, again, we want to, uh, to thank them. And the last thing I want to talk about is what a spectacular uh, week we had and what a great weekend we had. And uh, uh, on, um, on Saturday, uh, those of us in Belleville, we were all treated to Porch Fest 2021. Last year, we had to cancel it because of COVID. And this year, uh, we went ahead and were able to put it on. Uh, the health unit uh, was consulted. Uh, I was very impressed. Everyone was practicing social distancing. When they couldn't, they were wearing a mask. Uh, it was an outdoor event. So of course, uh, we're not as concerned as some of the indoor events. But I have to tell you that I don't believe I've ever seen as many people at Porch Fest in the history here in Belleville as we did this year. The weather couldn't have been better. It was a spectacular day. But the quality of the entertainment as we went around and the fact that residents of East Hill were so gracious to open up their, their, their community with us. Um, you know, obviously there were a couple of bigger uh, acts or larger groups watching acts around East Hill. But if you took a, a stroll down Queen Street on, on Saturday, it was amazing to see uh, how people were, uh, were out and about enjoying the weather, enjoying the rewards that we're able to share now because we've been so, uh, we worked so hard during COVID and it really was, uh, really was great. Um, I also had the opportunity to attend the Legion um, uh, here in Belleville to recognize their annual awards uh, event for um, length of service for people who have served and served the Legion, but also uh, for those who uh, were the Legionnaire of the Year and the Volunteer of the Year. And so that was uh, terrific. And uh, we um, uh, appreciate uh, the service of, of everybody involved in the Legion. And it's so nice to be able to go back to some of the things that we used to do before COVID. Uh, it's giving us a taste of all the things that we've missed in our community. So with that, I uh, will um, probably not be able to do an update uh, next week, the week of uh, October the 4th, I believe, um, because I am leading a delegation to Germany uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, we have to visit, uh, we want to visit a company that has just opened up uh, here in Belleville and we wanna not just thank them, but discuss with them their plans for expansion and further opportunity here in our market. Um, and in addition to that, we uh, are going to visit our sister city. So traditionally, uh, the groups that have gone to LAR for the past 50 years, 2022 will be the 50th anniversary of that exchange, have gone in groups of 60 or 70 people at a time and have billeted. And of course, um, you know, while travel is safe between Canada and Germany, and there's no requirement for quarantine on either end, um, the, the fact that this trip was really tentative up until uh, just a week ago um, meant that we really couldn't make the plans for that large group. So um, we uh, are going to go uh, uh, just uh, have a quick visit uh, there. Uh, we're going to visit that company um, and uh, I'll uh, be unavailable next week. But the following week, I'll be able to give uh, an update on it, maybe share some pictures and, uh, and uh, let you know how uh, that meeting, that trip went uh, for it. You know, again, um, everybody in our group from Canada is double vaccinated. Germany has very similar rules to us now where you need proof of vaccination uh, to be able to go to a number of places. Uh, you wear masks indoors and, uh, and, uh, and we're looking forward to it. Um, but uh, I will miss next week's uh, update. So with that, uh, if you have any questions or any comments, you can always get a hold of me through my city hall office, but also all of your members of Belleville City Council. We'd all love to hear from you. Uh, we hope you enjoy the, the fall. Um, updates on COVID, updates on our, our policies in terms of vaccination requirements, they're all posted on the City of Belleville website along with our contact information. And so I encourage you to go there if you have any questions. Otherwise, uh, stay well, uh, have a happy uh, Thanksgiving and the week before Thanksgiving, and I'll be back in touch soon with another update from the City of Belleville. Take care.